Hello friends, welcome back to the workroom. Today I'm working on something I've been putting off for a while. I have a really good system for storing patterns, sewing patterns, the paper kind that you get in a little envelope, and I've not been keeping up on it, so things have got a little bit out of hand. But that's okay, today we're going to sort it all out and get everything filed correctly and can move forward from there, probably by buying more patterns. Let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my supplies. Poly files, the kind that you put in a folder. You will also want a folder to put them in when you're done. Ziploc freezer bags, the resealable kind. I have a specific one that I like. These ones are 26 by 28 centimeters. That's a little on the big side, I'll be honest. I'm neurotic and all of mine are the same, so that's what we use. Regular labels. I could probably write directly on the bags, but I like the label better. So this approach works for basically all pack. I've got a mixture of vintage and modern ones, a lot of different brands. It doesn't matter. So I take the contents out of the envelope. The contents of the envelope are going to go into a Ziploc bag. Like I said, you could use smaller bags than this. I like the extra space because we all know that they expand once you start using them. I'm going to label the Ziploc bag in the top right corner. You don't have to do it in the top right corner, but you need to do every bag the same. On each pattern, you put the same information. So the pattern company, this is a simplicity. Put the size if it's relevant. This is a vintage pattern, so it's got slightly more complex sizing information. This is a young junior teen size 11 slash 12 bus 32. I've put all of that on the label. If the pattern has a year printed on it, 1970. I put that on the label. If it has a designer on it, so over here I've got some Angela Clayton ones, I'd put that on the label. I also like to just put a little description of what it is. This helps me out if I'm going looking for the bag for a particular pattern to just confirm that it is the one that I think it is. And then most importantly, again in the top right corner, I put the number. So this is 9195. That's my completed label for this pattern. You can obviously adjust this to whatever works for you. Put the information that you need on that label. That's what I need. So now I've got that label, I'm going to label my pattern baggie. So this is ready to be filed and then the pattern envelope goes into one of these and that gets filed separately. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. So now I've got all the pattern envelopes into poly files. They go into a folder. You can organize these folders however you want. I have one folder for vintage patterns, one folder for costume patterns, and then one folder for just everything else. This is my everything else folder. And within that, I have them organized according to what they are. So dresses, formal dresses, coats, separates, sleepwear. Having these folders means that I can very easily browse through what I already have. I don't always know what I'm looking for, but I know that I want to make a dress or a pair of trousers, or I'm looking for a top pattern that I can adjust in a specific way, or maybe a dress pattern would work, but I can narrow in on what I want because it's sort of organized. Also, because it's in a folder, if I'm not happy with how it's organized, I can always take it out and redo it. Because the envelopes are in plastic folders, they're much more protected. They're not getting damaged every time I flick through the catalog. This is exactly what it is, it's a catalog. So all these new pattern envelopes are gonna get filed into one of my folders and then 
I'll be able to look through, find what I want to make, and then go and get that pattern out, which I need to show you how that bit works. So this is my filing cabinet. Could probably find a better place for it, but this is where I have it now. And inside the filing cabinet, could probably do with a bigger filing cabinet, but this is what I have, so we work with it. Inside the filing cabinet, the Ziploc bags containing the patterns are organized in number order. It's that simple. Starting at the lowest number, which, well, no, excitingly, I've got one that doesn't have a number at all. So it goes first, if that makes sense. And then the smallest number I have is 26 period patterns. And then, all the way up to 13931. When I pick the pattern I want out of the catalog, I go and look for that number. The reason why I write all the other information on the label and not just the number is that because I'm filing all of the pattern companies in the same box, sometimes you get people doubling up on numbers. Occasionally you even get companies doubling up on numbers within their own brand, which when you collect vintage patterns happens more often than you'd think. But mainly I'm looking for the number because that's the order they're in and then the other information the pattern company disambiguates if i've got two with the same pattern number the extra information disambiguates if i've got two of the same number from the same company but that are different patterns because they were made 30 years apart but the number is the most important thing and the number is generally what i keep track of even when i'm going into these on a regular basis to get patterns out and put them back in again the rest of the patterns are protected by the plastic they don't get shuffled around, they don't rub against each other. The Ziploc bags are big enough that it doesn't matter how many times I unfold and iron and cut out and refold, I'm not trying to stuff it back into an envelope, I'm putting it in a bag that is more than big enough to hold the pattern pieces. This whole process not only makes it much easier for me to see what I have, which you can see how many patterns I have if I had them all just in boxes. Now I've done that, that's the thing is I used to do that, I have done that before having them all in boxes. I bought patterns twice because I forgot I had them and it wasn't easy to check. Also, if I was looking for a specific pattern, it was really hard to find. And if I didn't know what I was looking for, quite often I'd settle for something else because I was bored of looking. This eliminates all of that. It keeps my patterns in better condition. It protects them. Most of the pattern stays out of the light most of the time. All in all, I think it's a really great system. It took me a long time to find a pattern storage system that really worked for me, but this one really does. As long as I remember to stay on top of incorporating new patterns into the collection. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy. Follow me on Instagram to see pictures of my cat. And if you feel so inclined, down in the description box there is a link to my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off or reoccurring donation to support this channel and the Simplicity Half Price Sale. Kofi supporters get early access to all of my videos, permanent access to things like live streams, which eventually get delisted off the channel, and the occasional extra sneak peek. In fact, they may already know what my next big project is. Dream big, and I'll see you next time.